Apparently the Terence Crawford Kell Brook fight is nearly a done deal for November 14th. So I'm going to quote Tom DeBoeuf, who is the president of Top Rank. He said, quote, we're having advanced conversations with Brook. It makes sense for both fighters. We're eyeing a November date. If it can get done, November 14 is earmarked as the date. The location as of now is Las Vegas in a studio type environment. There was talk of going to Omaha, where Crawford is from, in an intimate setting with some fans. We're weighing it up. First, we've got to see if we can put the match together, then the venue, end quote. So step one appears to be done. Obviously, most people, and I'm going to say especially Crawford, would prefer a scenario where he can fight in Omaha with at least some fans. He has a great fan base in Omaha, and it would be a real boost for them if at least some of them were able to get in the arena. And it would add to the atmosphere. Even if you're watching on television, the fact that there's some fans there, it adds to the atmosphere. For Kel Brook, on the other hand, he might prefer to have no fans at all. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it all depends on his mindset. Some boxers actually get a kick out of fighting in the other guy's backyard and silencing their fans. Chris Eubank Sr. used to be like this. In many interviews, he talked about how he loved being the villain. He loved, like when he went to Germany and fought Graziano Rocciagiani, he said he got an absolute buzz out of being booed by the crowd <laughs> and heckled. Chris Eubank Sr. really was one of the original trolls because <laughs> he was trolling boxing fans back then with his pompous swagger, you know, when he would get into the ring. Chris Eubank Sr., great character back in the days, in the 90s. Um, and to be honest with you, still a pretty entertaining character now, although he's kind of gone off the radar a little bit, hasn't he, since his son hasn't been very active recently and his son's career hasn't been anywhere near as successful, not only as his own career, but as successful as he anticipated and wanted it to be. But his son's still got time. Let's see if he can turn it around. And I say successful in terms of achievements, world titles, beating top-level opposition, because he's been very successful financially, Chris Eubank Jr., Let's not get that twisted. Very successful. And, you know, more power to him. But anyway, back to this uh, Terence Crawford, Kell Brook fight. I hope it happens. And if it does happen, by the way, it will be one week prior to the uh, Errol Spence, Danny Garcia fight. And that's real good timing to have it a week prior. Now, I'm going to assume it's going to be pay-per-view. I mean, actually, let me not assume because... Aren't they going to make Vasyl Lomachenko versus Teofimo Lopez on regular ESPN, not on pay-per-view? If they can do that on regular ESPN, then maybe they can do Crawford Brook on regular ESPN as well because there's an issue with like college football and what have you. Or is it, is it college basketball, college football? One of those sports in America where they're not really having as many games as normal or any games at all. And therefore, that is going to free up some of the ESPN budget to spend on other sports, meaning they don't necessarily need to put certain fights on pay-per-view if they've got this, you know, budget to spend on other sports, so on and so forth. So yeah, maybe it won't be pay-per-view. And if it's not pay-per-view, amazing. That's a best case scenario. Because if you make fans choose between Crawford Brook and uh, the, the uh, pay-per-view a week later between Errol Spence and Danny Garcia, they're probably going to pick Errol Spence, Danny Garcia rather than Crawford Brook. So that would hurt Crawford, right? But if they've got some money freed up and they can make the fight happen on regular ESPN, that's a win-win for boxing fans. So you can watch Crawford Brook and then a week later, if you want to pay for it, you can watch Errol Spence versus Danny Garcia, which I think is a real intriguing fight, by the way. If this was the Errol Spence at his absolute peak in the greatest of shape, you know, coming off a period of high activity in the ring, then I'd be confident in picking Errol Spence. But that's not the er the Errol Spence we've got now. We've now got an Errol Spence who has been out of the ring a long time and we're not sure about him. He had a tough fight against Sean Porter, right? And then he had that horrific car accident. Is he going to be the same again? I know he's going to say, yeah, I'm, I'm good as ever. His trainer's going to say that. Everybody's going to say that. Doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> they're hardly going to come out and say, oh yeah, Errol's been compromised and he's not the same guy anymore. They're not going to do that. They're going to come out and act like he's as good as new. But anyway, 
I'll leave that for a different video. For this video, let me know what you guys think in the comments below about Crawford Brook. Hopefully it gets done for November 14. And then we've got a lot of entertainment to look forward to. Boxing has adjusted. Yeah, at least there is some, but even if fans can't attend, at least we have some entertainment to watch in our homes throughout the winter. And it's, to be honest with you, a pretty good lineup for the rest of the year. There are good fights. You know, you've got uh, Dylan White taking on Povetkin in the rematch. Possibly you've got Daniel Dubois versus Joe Joyce. We know AJ's going to fight. We've got Chisora Usek. I'll talk about that in another video. We've got the Charlos fighting this weekend. We've got Danny Garcia, Errol Spence, Crawford Brooks. So yeah, there's plenty to look forward to in the boxing calendar and there's probably other fights I haven't even mentioned. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about this specific fight earmarked for November 14. How do you see it going down? Drop your comments below. I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.